So can you talk a little bit about what your style says about you? I guess for me, my style is two things. It's actually me expressing myself and how I feel that day, that month, that year, and what I'm trying to project and share. And at the same time, it's my protection, it's my armor, it's my cocoon. I've been wearing my hair pretty much the way I have it now for my whole life. When I first was in New York City in the 80s, you know, I was either too white or too black and sort of in between. And I would get fucking catcalled by black girls all the time about my hair and the fact that it was natural and that I needed to do this and needed to do that. I went through a really hard time of just people not understanding that I didn't want to spend every Saturday at the hair salon. I didn't want to go to the Dominicans and have my hair blown out. It just wasn't my thing. I was too Afrocentric for black people. I was too wild for, you know, the imagery that the white person had of the black woman at the time. I'm completely fascinated right now with dating, dating sites and this dating world that's going on on the internet and through social media. And blondes are really having way more fun than anybody. <laughs> well, it's a fact. That's because of our media. Yeah, it's a fact. It's because that's all you see. Exactly. And imagine not being blonde and looking horrible as a blonde. Like, I, I, that's not, it's not gonna happen. So, okay, here we come back to my whole invisible woman moment. By the way, I tried every dating site I've never gotten well, I've gotten three responses, but never anything past that. You know, this idea that you have to be this skinny, light-skinned, flowing hair, slightly stupid, tits-out woman. Now I have to be a fat-assed, slightly stupid, yet cunning in business and ready to have face down, ass up. And I don't even know how I would do that. I'd probably hurt my knee. What about your experience in the fashion industry with being black. In the beginning, I couldn't get clothes for anybody black. I couldn't call up anybody. To be honest with you, I, I even remember exact, like I couldn't get clothes for Mary J. Blige. You couldn't get clothes for anybody that was black. It took a long time, it took hip, hip hop changing. It took, uh, it took a lot of the design houses a little bit to realize how strong the black dollar was. I even had a Japanese company hit me up once and say, we're not really interested in you know, the black market. I was like, wow, okay, because that's all that's buying your stuff. And you know, then I have to go back to my client and be like, you know, they're not gonna give it to us. Even though you have the number one record, you're the number one this and that. It got easier, of course, later, once also black celebrities were being used on covers of magazines. A lot's changed, it doesn't mean that, you know, Blatant racism is gone. It just means that we're now a little bit hipper to the game. And it's a game. It isn't because they suddenly change their political views and they love black people. It's because they make money off of black people, so they better fucking get that jacket on him and get him out there selling that stuff. I find it shocking and surprising there are only like eight, eight black people in all of fashion. Now, a lot of people will come and argue with me on that. Yeah, yeah, I know your delivery guys that bring your shit in are black and African. It's not what I'm saying. I'm not talking about like your staff of, I'm talking about recognized designers, recognized you know, owners of PR. And in the meantime, all I'm seeing right now is African influenced fashion. For the beginning of my career all the time, I didn't get hired by a lot of black people because they've said I wasn't black enough. On the white perspective, I'm, I'm too black, I'm too opinionated, I'm too loud. I love that too black, that's always my favorite. And I, but, you know, that's also, women, like if, even if I weren't black, then I'd be a bitch. I was on a conference call a long time ago with somebody who didn't know who I was and didn't know anything about me. And so we all start talking about the job and it's a, it's a job for a hip hop artist, album packaging and whatever, and I'm talking. And the guy goes, starts screaming, because he's, you know, the boss, starts screaming and getting aggressive on the phone and tells me like, you know, you don't fucking understand you know, being black and this is like, like as if, first of all, he obviously thought I was white already. That's like, why, why make that assumption? Especially with what we're talking about. He told me that he thought I was white because of the way that I speak, that I talk like I'm white. That goes right back to like childhood teasing all my life. Like I don't use your vernacular, so therefore I think I'm white. That's really fucked up. Now for this job, I have to prove how black I am. And what does that fucking mean anyway? that basically you want me to put her in an outfit where she's just a hoochie, is really what you're saying, because that's black. Wow, okay, so even you as a black man are gonna tell me that now I have to sell the black girl as a hooker. 
fucked up. Really difficult. And I have to say no to a lot of jobs like that, and I have. I can't do that. Like, you know, there are little black girls that I know. I have little black girls in my family. White is right for some reason, and you, and even black people, I mean, and it's, it's like this innate racism against themselves. Inevitably, black people are carrying this cloak of shame that we have got to get rid of. We have been cartooned, lampooned, dehumanized when we are the mother. We are the power. There is nobody more powerful. And the fact that we have been so easily and, and for a long time stripped of our essence and our power is one of the largest crimes that I can think of. It's not even black. I call it north-south. We are brown. If you are of any tint, you are the other. And so as a woman, as a black woman, brown woman, Indian woman, you are dealing with this an in, insane amount of shame. And for you to experience difficulty yourself with, it seems as though, like when you're going back to the dating sites and everything, just, you know, when you're like actually not that. Dude, really can you imagine? You know, with someone. I mean, I think of myself as a pretty funny, interesting. Oh my God. Dropped it. This invisible woman thing, it actually really kind of hits home to an ego that I didn't even know I was still protecting. To be on these sites and get nothing, when I say not, I mean crickets. And it really, it's maybe what's propelling me to take a real good look at it and try to maybe do something about it because I also think that a big part of the problem in our world is that nobody's loving each other anymore. We barely have time to like spend with each other. How, yeah, on this and that and like, how do you, how am I going to do that? How am how I going to like, how, do you be human being? how am I going to find somebody? Like, am I just going to be out here by myself? Sorry. Go. Am I just going to be out here by myself forever? Is, and am I supposed to be cool about it because that's what I'm supposed to do? You know, am I supposed to be okay with all the changes because it doesn't really fit into what I see out there anymore? Am I supposed to go get super thin? Do I want to stop eating? Should I stop drinking? How many more cleanses can I do? Are they even here anyway? Like, maybe I should be with women. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because at least I know what I'm doing there. It's really fucking hard. And I'm really tired of it. I'm tired of being alone and I'm tired of... Oh, dude. And I'm, t I'm a little bit tired of the fact that nobody else wants to talk about it. And I'm supposed to even be ashamed of this. And it's so fucking simple. And I can't be the only one that feels like this. And I'm not hear, depressed. I hear every, I know, I, I, I'm not depressed. I'm fucking lonely. That's what my largest struggle is. Remembering that I don't have to be relevant because first of all, relevant changes like this. And second of all, it's okay to not be relevant because like everything else, it always comes back. When do you feel the most vulnerable? <laughs> I think I feel my, my most vulnerable, my, my really like my inner most vulnerable when I'm in love. When you are really opening up, you are really having to tell the truth. Not only wanting to, but having to, to make this feeling of love grow and nurture. What were you thinking just now? I was thinking, to be honest, I was thinking about the fact that you were talking about your son and it made me for one second think like, you know, I had a moment of like, am I, am I sad that I've never had a kid? And I really mean that as in like, not having had that thing happen to my body, not having mother-child experience. Because that's something that I think I missed out on and I would have really enjoyed and probably really been good at. But my timing and my heart timing never really came together on that. You know, I had an abortion, so I have been pregnant. And for me, that was a big deal at the time because I was actually told that I could not get pregnant. To be honest, when I had the abortion, it was one of those things where I went under, I had the abortion, never thought about it again, boom, out the door. 
was until I was like in my 40s that it even in a thought came up. And the thought was, oh, had I had a baby, it would be X amount of years old right now. And it actually did bring up a sense of loss. And yeah, I probably, I missed out. Doesn't make any less or worse, but it did bring up a little sadness. And why is black beautiful? So many reasons. I think first of all, because it is, we are all actually black. So I think the reason why we are all attracted as black people, as white people to black is because it really is the mother color. It really is the, the real rhythm, the blood of, you know, it, is, it comes from, we are all one. It is beautiful because it is different because it is the one that's pointed out and cast out. Cause isn't it always the true diamond? The true power is the one, is, is mm -hmm. the one less, one. less loved. And why is in your body a good place to be? I've been watching my body change. You know, I, I weighed 120 pounds my whole life. Now I'm at 145 and it's doing this thing that I'm actually finding a bit fascinating. I'm finding it hard to like negotiate a little bit, almost out of like, wow, I'm becoming a woman. Like it got, it got super feminine on me real quick. Like I never had these tits before. I got them at 45. Wow. It took me a long time to love myself as a teenager and now I'm having to do it all over again. Wow.